Hello, 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 everybody. Lori here from Unique in the Creek. How is everybody doing? Say hello when you come in. Just so I know there's some people. Now, I was going to stream on my page and Michelle's page at the same time. But apparently, I can no longer do that anymore. So, I'm going to be going on twice. So, I'm going to make a wreath, a simple wreath here on my Facebook page. And then after that live, I'm going to go over to Michelle from Monkey's Creations Facebook page and do a live over there. You get a twofer. You get a twofer. Let's see, am I up? There we go, yeah, I'm up. Oh, hello, there's all my friends. Hi, everybody. Hi, Jennifer Scott, good morning to you, or good afternoon, you're right. God, I've been sitting down here for a while. Hey, hey, Jackie Blewett. How are you, girly? Hi, Chris Merritt, I know, this mash. I'm going to inspire you again, Chris. <laughs> Hello, everybody. So if you just joined, um, I was going to stream on both my page and Michelle's page, but I can't do that anymore. So I'm going to do a design here. And then once I'm finished the design here, I'm going to go over onto Monkey's Creations page and I'm going to go live and do a different design over there. How's that sound? You got a two for today. Hello, hello, everybody. All right, so I did mention um, uh, last week, I think it was last week, that I got this, I gotta turn this ring light off. It's, it's shining on my cutting mat. There we go. That is better. Okay. Michelle, she's hanging in there. Grandma is the strongest lady I ever met or ever known or ever known of. She's just not giving up, but it will probably be today. Although I said that yesterday, so. And Monkey's doing very, well, she's doing as best as she can. Um, she has her nurse hat right on right now, so she's not granddaughter mode. And I, I just love that about her. She, She's keeping it all together for her mom and making sure grandma has pain meds every two hours and everything. And she's doing that by herself. I, I had said to her this morning, I really wish... We could predict the future because I I would have went down. I still continued to go down. Oh, it's this ring light that's <laughs> making this thing. Um, I would have went down and took shifts with her just to give her a break. But coulda, woulda, shoulda, right? Anyways, so I um, the only thing I can do for her is go live on her page for her and keep her algorithms up. So that's why... When I'm done this live, I'm going to go onto her page and do a live on her page and so the algorithms stay alive. And there's probably somebody at my door, but Dave's home. Anyways, I did mention I got this absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous mesh. This mesh is a um, champagne and sage green ombre. Oh, if Hi, Bubba. Um, I can give you guys the number. I did buy quite a bit of it. So if you want to try what I'm going to be doing today, um, the number is RY8509R7. Okay. RY8509R7. And if you didn't write down the number, uh, just type in sage into the search bar of Unique in the Creek and um, this mesh will come up. It is a uh, like an ombre mesh. 
It's got a lot of deluxe foil, so most of it is all foil. Um, it's so, so pretty. So I'm going to be doing both designs today. I'm going to be doing with this mesh. Now, one thing I noticed about this mesh is because when I was wood burning it or cutting it, um, it says, again, I've, uh, and I've said that to everybody many times, to pay attention or even measure your mesh. Because right here, it says that it's 10 inches by 10 yards. Okay. So I cut my first piece 10 inches by 10 yards and I'm like, that doesn't look right. And I, so I measured it and sure enough, the width of it is actually 10 and a half inches. 10 and a half inches. So it does say 10 inches over here. However, over here, if you look, it says 10.5 inches by 10 yards. Okay, so just again, keep, you know, the, the um, wholesale manufacturer, they make mistakes too. Obviously this is a bit of a mistake, especially if you're making flowers and you need a perfect square. Always just stay cautioned to the wind or whatever the saying is and just measure it before especially if you need a complete square measure your mesh okay and this is indeed 10 and a half inches okay um i am going to show you how i heat seal this i did heat seal this for um the project i'm doing right now because it is going to be a petal um but i'm not doing a flower I'm going to do more of a laurel, L-A-U-R-E-L, more of a laurel style wreath with this gorgeous mesh because I do not want to put all kinds of ribbons and bows and everything on top of this mesh because it is too gorgeous for that. This mesh needs to be showcased by itself, okay? Um, you, it is a little more pricier than normal mesh. So again, why? I wouldn't want to cover it all up with all kinds of ribbons and stuff because, you know, you pay for this design and this deluxe foil. Um, so we don't want to do that. So I'm going to show you a really easy design on the ring board. And then I'm going to go over on Michelle's page and I'm going to do a design on the character board using the same mesh. How's that sound? Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how, and if you've never seen this before, this is, uh, we, what we do is we wood burn the mesh. Um, now this design, I would wood burn it and I, and I did. The design I'm gonna do on Michelle's page, you really don't have to wood burn it. Um, so what you're gonna do is you need a piece of glass or um, a, 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 like a cookie sheet or something um, that won't melt with the heat of the wood burner, okay? So I picked this um, glass cutting mat up from Amazon, uh, it's a great, especially if you'd make a lot of flowers, it is a great investment, this glass mat. Um, I believe it's under $20, it's not really expensive, but it already has all the increments on it. And I've already, I've highlighted the 10 and a half here, um, cause I do often use 10 and a half inch mesh. So I have a highlighted line with just a white piece of cardboard underneath so I can see the lines and everything. Um, and I'm going to, and wood burning is just simply cutting your mesh and sealing it at the same time. So you really want to do this with a poly burlap if you're making a flower or the horizontal wide stripe, anything that frays a lot um, and you don't want to see like a lot of strings or anything, you're going to want to wood burn it or heat seal it if you have a heat sealer. Um, so I'm going to be using this, this simple wood burning tool that you get from Walnut Hollow. I got this on Amazon. They sell them in any of the craft stores. And the tip I use is just the tip that's actually on it. 
scroll right down. So it's actually the tip that comes on it. Now, before you plug it in and turn it on, I just want to share something with you because I don't think many people tell you this. Um, every time you go to use your wood burning tool, you can buy these wood burning tools at the dollar store. What? No. Um, I got to use needle nose pliers because mine's hot. It's turned on, but always make sure your tip because it just screws on. Okay. The tip of your wood burning tool just screws on. And sometimes it gets loose. And when it gets loose, it's not going to get as hot as you need it. Okay. So yes, it's a chisel tip. Thank you so much, Sherry. Um, so make sure every time before you turn it on, you can use your fingers before you turn it on. Um, and just make sure your tip is tightened onto your wand here. Okay. And if you just get in the habit of that, or like I did, you uh, tighten it with the needle nose pliers. Okay, so I am cutting these at 10 and a half inches, okay, because I want a complete square. So you're going to roll out your mesh. And normally I would always say use your personal protection. Um, the wood, I mean, the smoke that comes off of this, you're burning plastic, so it does not smell very well. And I don't know what is in it, but there's something in it because it makes my skin itchy and it makes my eyes burn, especially poly burlap. So I do have a, a respirator and goggles that I purchased from Amazon, and they are under Lori's favorite tools on my website. And I believe the, this glass cutting mat is too. And if you want to get a wood burner, you might as well. I don't know if I have a link or anything, but um, make sure you get use your personal protection if you're inside. If you're doing it outside and the air is blowing, you, you should be okay. Um, but normally I wear a, a mask and goggles in a long sleeve shirt because it makes my skin itch. Okay, enough about safety. So what I'm going to do is I pull out my mesh right across. I have one of these steel metal rulers that you can get them at the dollar store. Well, they can get them at the Dollarama here in Canada, but it's a metal and it's got like a cork on the back. So it kind of sits up a bit, which is amazing to run your line down to make a straight cut. Okay. Oh, you can see videos, Chris. Go into the old videos on YouTube and you will see me all decked out in my PPE. Okay, so I have my metal ruler on the 10 and a half inch. So there's the 10 and a half inch. And like I said, I highlighted the back of my, uh, my glass cutting mat because I use 10 and a half inches a lot. All right, so I got my metal ruler and then I'm just gonna slowly go down with the chisel, flat chisel part, cutting. And you're just gonna slowly go against your ruler. And what it's doing, it's burning and kind of singeing the edge at the same time. Okay. And that will prevent it from fraying. This doesn't fray as bad as like a poly burlap or anything because it's got a lot of metallic in it and it's basically the plastic that, that frays, okay? So this mesh, I could have probably just used a really sharp rotary cutter, but I wanted to show again how um, to do some wood burning. So again, you're gonna pull out your mesh. I put my phone, sometimes I use my measure buddy, just something heavy. You're going to line it up right to the edge of your cutting where the zero is. And you're going to want to also make sure the bottom surged edge of your mesh is straight. So it's also running a straight line. So that's why this kind of cutting board is really great. Um, I used to use just a, a glass cutting board from the dollar store and stuff. And I would mark with markers on it. That works as well. Same with a cookie sheet. 
uh, but you want to make sure your bottom is straight when you're cutting as well as your the, your side cut so you get a nice perfect square and sometimes with the petals you need a perfect square especially like a Dean Michael petal you want your points and your whole petal to look one uniform piece Um, so you do want it a perfect square. Okay. Do I have a brand of rotary cutter you think is best? You know what's funny? I have, I must love these, and I, I do sell these ones in my store. I love them. Um, I don't even know the, the uh, skew on them, but I do have three of them, and I alternate. Um, I like these ones. Um, not just because they're in my store, but obviously... I would sell them because I do love them. So you can have these. I do have these in my store. And I have a, a smaller version as well. If you're just starting out and you don't want to spend, you know, $16 on a rotary cutter, I have a cheaper version that, you know, if you're just using it every once in a while, that one would be just suffice. Okay, so I have cut two rolls of this beautiful champagne and sage mesh, okay? Because I cut one roll for the project I'm doing now, and I cut another roll for the project I'm gonna do on Michelle's page. Okay. I need to open a drink. What I also have in my possession is, this is a brand new zip tie gun. Now it probably, it'll, it looks exactly the same as my old one. Um, I have purchased 10 of these from our, um, the, the company that I buy all our zip ties from and our cable mounts. I purchased 10 of these because I wanna see if they're any good or if they're like good enough for me. Um, I'm probably going to sell zip tie guns on the website. Okay. So if this works really well for me today and it doesn't skip and it works, I'll, I'll list some of them on the website. I have actually um, contacted the manufacturer to see if he can, if they can make them in pink for us because I don't, they do realize that crafters, a lot of crafters are using zip tie guns now so i'm like well hey if a lot of crafters mo m you know majority women using zip tie guns pink would be a really great color right yeah we need pink everything <laughs> but anyways we have blue for now hello hello um okay so I'm actually I'm gonna move the move this. And like I said, we're gonna be doing a laurel petal or a laurel style wreath on the ring board. I've already started it. It's looking gorge. Look at this. Oh, I better roll out. Because it's getting big. Look how pretty this is. It's sage green and champagne. Now, I, it's probably looking a lot more green on the screen. I'm looking at the screen right now. However, um, when I take a picture of it on the door, you will see the sage, um, the sage uh, and champagne. It's not gold, it's champagne, okay? Um, the ombre in it. It's very pretty. And now we'll write this. We're going to be using one, um, one roll of this mesh to make this. Uh, there's no settings on the zip tie gun. So I'm, this is, I haven't even used it yet. I will be in two seconds. I'm going to shut my wood burner off. Okay, so this is just made the whole thing is made with a Bubba pedal, okay? The Bubba pedal is pretty much almost the same as the Rita pedal, but all going the same way without having to cut the mesh. 
And the holes I used to make this is I used row one from the hole to the outside board and then row again, row one hole to one and a half. Okay, so we're not using this hole to this hole or this hole to the inside board. If you, try, if you do this to the inside board, you're gonna lose a lot of the actual hole in the center of our wreath. So that's why I'm using this hole, this hole to the outside of the board and this one to one and a half, okay? And I'm using every set, every row of holes, okay? Yeah, you can really, it's because it, it's a deluxe foil, but I'm sure, once I take the, a picture without all these lights and everything, you guys will definitely see the beauty color of it. Okay, and this is a very simple wreath. You preload it, you preload your board, hole to the outside, and then this hole to this hole. So I do have a ring I was doing different things on with. So I was playing, I play all the time. Especially when we get a mesh looking that like this, what you don't, what you do not want to do with a mesh like this is use it for poofs, okay? Because you, like I said, it's a bit of a pricey mesh. It would make a gorgeous rose. It absolutely would. If you were to do poofs, and I I cut all my mesh, so I can't even do a poof. We'll just say this is a poof. Okay, we'll do a poof like this. Okay, so there's your poof. And when you do poofs, what you're gonna see is only the middle part. And the direct middle right here is just value mesh. So you lost all this deluxe foil on the sides by doing a poof, you lost the beauty of the whole um, of the whole mesh. So don't use a mesh like this for doing poofs. Okay, um, you're, once you get all the poofs on your thing, you won't even see the champagne color. Okay, so I just wanted to describe that to you guys. So because there's certain meshes you just don't want to waste, and there's certain meshes that you also don't want to put a whole bunch of ribbons over. Okay, so no poofs with this. Um, this turned out kind of pretty, so I did this, the tulip petal with it. Now, it turned, it, it, you can see that it's really, really pretty and everything else. However, once you start um, putting these on and making a flower with it, what's going to happen is they're going to layer and you're going to lose from here down. So you're not going to see the gold or the champagne. Okay. So you don't want to do a petal like this with a, a mesh like this either. Because you want to see, you want to see what you're paying for, right? Now I did a rolled petal with this absolutely gorgeous look. You can see, I wonder if I turn these lights off if you'll be able to see the coloring better. Hold on. Can you see the coloring better? Anyways, rolled petal, beautiful. You can see the champagne, you can see the sage green. However, because it is a deluxe foil mesh, it's quite thick, so when you roll it, your nub at the bottom is quite thick. So if you can work with that, this would make a gorgeous flower, a rolled petal flower, okay? Um, and you wouldn't have to wood burn it. Absolutely wouldn't have to wood burn it. Just roll it up, stick it in a zip tie, and continue like I've shown many, many times on the large board. Gorgeous. But... And I, I was playing around and you can see the Rita petal. This is the Rita petal, gorgeous. You can see all your colors. I did uh, kerfuffles, gorgeous. You can see the colors. So 
this is, like I said, this is a, a, a mesh I wouldn't put ribbons over. So the laurel wreath is one that's very simple to make and it really showcases this gorgeous mesh. So to make the Bubba Petal, I just made myself a mess here. I got my 10 and a half inch piece here. Okay, I'm going to curl up. Okay, curl up. I'm going to take a couple of my little, um, little clips here. I'm going to turn my piece into a diamond shape with the factory surged edge top left. Okay, like I always do. It's dry in here. So top left. So I'm going to take the top and I'm going to bring that top corner down to the bottom. Now for this petal, we are not worried about lining up this corner, this middle corner, like you would with a Dean Michael petal. Okay. For this petal, what we're worried about lining up is the two right and left corners, okay? And that's where these come in handy. So I bring my corner down, and then what I'm gonna do is I put my arm over top, just like this, and I'm going to match up as best I can the corner here, and then I'm putting a clip on it, okay? And then I'm going to go to the other side and do the exact same thing. All right. And now we'll make sure this bottom corner does not have to line up. Don't worry about it. If it doesn't line up, don't struggle that it's not going to line up. Actually, it's a little bit shorter here. I just want to make sure that these left and right corners, um, are, are together properly. Okay, so there's what we have. It's like a triangle. Then what you're gonna do, you're gonna take this bottom corner and we're gonna flip it up just like that to just to be below the, the um, seam here. Okay, so this is what we got. Okay, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna, I'm, I'm right-handed. I'm gonna take my right corner and flip it over just like that. And what I'm gonna do is adjust down here until these two are the same length, okay? So you don't have to measure or anything, just guesstimate. All right, I think that looks perfect. So, and when you're doing the bubble petal, what you're wanting to do is you can see that the surged factory edge are both facing the same way. And it's just kind of overlapped, but separated still. So you do see the two corners still, okay? And then what you're gonna do is you're going to, I pinch from the bottom, then I pinch from the top to the center, just like that. And we're going to put this whole thing right into the outside zip tie, just like that, and do it up. Now you want to do maybe a fingertip, depending if you, I have really tiny fingers, so um, a fingertip is quite small. If you have larger fingers, maybe a half a fingertip, but Whatever you do, do it the same um, length or put the same amount of the zip, uh, mesh into the zip tie for the whole thing going around, okay? And then pull it tight. And then you can take your little clips off. And there we go. And then you're gonna do another one again. You want all of your, your petals going, curving the same way. And it's, to achieve that, you have to make sure and pay attention to where your factory and surged edges, okay? So I've said it, oh my God, since the beginning of time, I always make sure 
my factory edge, no matter what kind of pedal or what I'm doing, is always on the left top or on the left, okay? So again, take that top, bring it to the bottom. Again, we're not really worrying about the bottom here. What we are worrying about is kind of lying up, lining up the corner, the right corner, and then the left corner. Uh, the skew is RY8509R7. Now I do have a, I did have a hundred rolls in stock because I really, really like this one. Um, so if you do like this, I would not hesitate getting it because it will go fast. Because I'm gonna also be using it on my other project. Okay, so there's your pedal. We're gonna bring that bottom corner just up, just slightly below our our seam here and then I just put my finger right in the middle and flip it over and then you're just going to again we're going to line up the corners we're working focusing on these two corners here and once they look like the same length scrunch the bottom to the middle scrunch the top to the middle so you're just doing two scrunches and there's our pedal and we're going to put it into the zip tie again the exact same length as the one you just put in so as you can see it layers over top of each other and starts to look like a laurel wreath and a laurel wreath is a bunch of leaves piled on each other and it's a very simplistic design a laurel wreath but they're very popular and really pretty um, but they're expensive because especially if you're using like if, if you you if you use um, greenery and stuff it could get pricey so I like to this mesh as soon as I seen it I thought oh my god I got to do a laurel wreath with it all right let's try out this new zip tie gun so for the zip tie gun this is the mechanics of it it is metal there is a slit right at the end of your zip tie gun and that slit or the slot is you're going to put the tail of it just take your gun and just go right in beside it hold it in your tail and squeeze it will tighten and cut your zip tie at the same time now I'm gonna play with the There we go. This one's actually really good. It really tightened that really well. <laughs> Much better than mine did, my old one does. Hmm. All righty. Um, now, I did pre-do some petals. And you can pre-make your petals by just simply making your petal and then putting a, a little rubber band on it. Yes, 32 pieces at 10 and a half inches. Absolutely. So it'll take one full roll. One roll to make the whole laurel wreath. Okay. So I have these little clear rubber bands I get from the dollar store in the hair section. And I use them just to put around the bottom of my uh, petals. So I can pre-make petals and then once I pre-make them, I just whip them into the zip tie. It goes really fast. So to do that, we're just going to do the exact same way we made the, the pedal before. Bring it down. Line up the corners. All righty. to flatten it and make sure that your corners are like actually laying flat onto your cutting mat there we go flip this up just below here then keep your hand in this right in the center flip this over your hand and then we're going to adjust to make sure that the two points are the same length 
All right, and then you're gonna scrunch from the bottom to the middle, and then the top to the middle. And then what you can do is take one of these little rubber bands, go around it twice, and then take your little clips off, and there we go. We got pre-made petals that we can just, just zip right in, okay? So this is really a, a nice petal to use for an actual flower as well. So you can def, most definitely use this on the large board and make a flower with a, gold, a beautiful center. Now keep in mind, this is not gold, okay? It's champagne. Gold and champagne are really two totally different colors, okay? Um, I did bring some gold bling rope and the gold bling rope wasn't even close to this gold color. So just keep that in mind that if you're looking for a champagne uh, a champagne ribbon or something, that it says champagne on it and not gold. Yes, this mesh is super gorge. And that's why I'm doing, I'm going to do two different designs today where it is showcasing the mesh. So I won't be using ribbons all over it and everything else. Um, I don't know if I have any more colors of the ombre style left in the store. I do know that I have a sage green fabric mesh with um, a, a thin gold stripe in it. That's really pretty too. I just wanted to more focus on this ombre style one and how to use it because I just hate when I see people using a really expensive mesh and then covering it all up with ribbons. It drives me nuts. It's like a pet peeve of mine. I want to, if I'm going to use this type of mesh, I want you to be able to see this, this mesh whether it be a flower or you'll see what I'm going to do on the character board. Now, when you get to the inner core part of your mesh roll, sometimes it's a little tricky because it wants to curl and all that stuff. So like this one, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to this one because it's kind of this mat, uh, bottom part is kind of sticking out. We don't want to see this, this yucky color or this yucky um, tattered mesh. So we're just going to trim it up a bit. Okay, so you can see this petal is, is nice, but this one, you can see a little bit, it was cut a little bit off. So all I'm going to do is take my scissors and just make sure you don't cut the surged edge here, just the back of it, and just trim until you don't see it anymore. There we go, just like that. So some of them, a few of them you may have to trim. Yes, this is this mesh and this whole style you could definitely do on a cross. Okay, so let's put this bad boy together. Um, because I pre-made all the petals, it's going to be very quick. So you're going to take your, make sure your surged edges are up. You don't want your yucky edges facing up, obviously. And again, you can see that all the petals are all curving one way. Alrighty. And the, when you have the little rubber band, it makes it so much easier because you're just going to stick it in and do the zip tie pretty much over top of the rubber band. Uh, this one needs to be trimmed a little bit. I just don't want the back of the mesh that you can see. So you can see by using uh, hole one to one and a half, instead of going closer to the inner circle, that it's keeping a nice round um, circle in the middle. And in laurel wreath, that's what you want.
and again, your zip tie gun, you just slide it. So you're putting your um, zip tie in that slot and you're gonna pull it. It might not, you might have to do it a couple times depending on how hard you actually pulled your zip tie when you, when you put your pedal in. So you just slide it. And it took two pumps for that one. So it tightens it nice. This one's actually a really nice one. I, I think I, I'm gonna order a whole bunch more to carry in the store. Now, if they can get us pink ones, that would be even better. <laughs> okay, a couple more of these and we're done. So I, I do start with the outside zip tie. And you can do this pedal for any of our boards. So this would look beautiful just on a simple oval with a, I was, I was going to do it on an oval, but I only brought two rolls of mesh home. So you would need one and a quarter, I think, for an oval, one and a quarter rolls. But you can do a simple bow. I have like this gorgeous um, like burlap and it's got like flakes of glitter on it. You could just do a very, very simple bow. If you wanted and just put it like at the top for a Christmas wreath or something. Um, this is really pretty in um, green. So just using green all the way around with a simple red bow, very Christmassy. Very, very Christmassy. And we do have a lot of, I bought a ton of hunter green. I bought a ton of emerald green, horizontal, um, wide stripe mesh to do this project because at Christmas this is going to be a really cool inexpensive wreath um, that you can do with one roll of mesh and a simple roll of ribbon. Just one simple bow up at the top or at the bottom and, it, and you'll be done with it. Now this one we're gonna we're on our last row. You just kind of lift that row up just a bit so you can get your petal in there. Hi Tom Hutton. And this one. And this is where it's nice when it's um, and I'm doing this upside down, but it's nice when it's uh, banded. Ooh, this is good. Should be good. I bought them. I got them right from a the zip tie manufacturer, so you would think it would be really well made, and it is. Alrighty, and that is our really. Let's see if I can zoom out a little bit more. And I will take a picture of this. Now you're going to want to make sure all your petals are nice. And nothing is folded or stuck. And it makes a beautiful, beautiful, simple wreath. Gold, uh, champagne and sage. One roll of mesh. There's the back. We got a nice open circle. You need an open circle for a laurel wreath. Now, I was also thinking maybe I could do um, a hanging bow. A hanging bow with just this would be really pretty. Actually, let's do one. I'll make a hanging bow. Um, so it doesn't really matter where you put your hanger because the whole wreath is exactly the same. So let's get our bow maker out and we'll just make, do a hanging bow. Yes, you could do white with a red bow. Like this is a really simple design, but really pretty. So you would want to use a really pretty mesh. Um, or um, like I said, if you just want a simple, I know a lot of people put laurel wreaths on all their front windows when they have like big houses. It's just a simple green wreath that looks like petals with a red bow. Awesome.
So there is 360 inches in a roll of mesh. Okay, and if you do the math, so 360 and we need um, 32 pieces. So you do have, you can cut your mesh. You wouldn't have, you wouldn't want to cut your mesh because you want a complete square, but 32 pieces at 360 gives you 11.25 inches per petal. So you do have a little bit of extra mesh left over. However, you want to make sure because sometimes the whole roll, the roll of mesh, it doesn't have a complete 10 yard. So even though you can make your whatever your cuts at 11.25, don't do it. Just keep it at 10 and a half. And that way, if the roll is a bit short, you don't have to worry about it. Okay. Uh, yes, this is the Bubba petal. So I'm going to do a hanging bow. Now I do them. I haven't done one in a long time. So what I want to do is flip this over. And I got to see how long I want my hanger. I don't want it too, too long. Oh, that looks good right here. So that is 20 inches long. So my hanger, the hanging part is 20 inches long. So 10 inches here. And we'll just cut that. Okay, that is going to be my hanger. All right, and now I'm going to make the bow. So I can put a little bit of, I'm going to put a little zip tie at the bottom. Right at the bottom here. Okay, I move up so you guys can see. All righty. Nice and tight. All right, so that's the part where it's gonna be attached to the wreath frame. And now I'm just gonna make a very simple bow. Um, let's see, how long are the tails gonna be? I'll do 14 inch tail. Um, and this, even though it looks the same, it is one-sided, the flex of gold are on the one side. Now, I don't sell this. This is from Michael's uh, Christmas collection. Really pretty. And I'm just gonna do five inch loop. Just a very simple, which I'll do, might as well use this up. A very simple bow. Okay, so the two back loops are five inches. I have enough to do one more loop on each side. I'll do that at four inches. All right, the last loop, and then whoo, just enough. Not this much. <laughs> Obviously, I've used this quite a few times. Okay. Um, I'm going to take a zip tie and take the whole thing off, including the hanger part. Move that over here. I'm going to put a zip tie around the front. To the back. And then before I tighten it, I'm going to put another zip tie in into the zip tie and tighten it really tight. It is sage and champagne deluxe foil ombre mesh. I guess it wouldn't be really ombre because ombre is from light to dark. And then I'm making just a little, a little circle here. Oops. 
I didn't want to tighten it. Because this is what the wreath is actually going to hang from. Okay, and we'll just give that a little bit of a fluff. Now, a lot of my Christmas ribbon that I did order that hasn't come in yet, there is quite a bit of sage and champagne coming because that is like one of the, that one doesn't look the same. That one's way bigger. Um, we do have some coming in, some Christmas ribbon with uh, sage and champagnes and stuff. All right. Hopefully that works. All right, so now I'm going to, it doesn't really matter where the top is, but we're gonna use, you want the bow, I'm gonna be doing along the back here. You do want the bow, the good part facing um, the outside. So I'm gonna put this upside down and I'm gonna zip tie it right to the board, uh, right here. Nice and tight, just like that. Okay, and the the little zip tie at the bottom is preventing it from sliding through. So we'll just trim that up a little bit so it looks nice. You can put a little bit of hot, oh, I don't have it on. I don't have my hot glue gun. You can put a little bit of hot glue under here and then just press it against the frame so it sits flush. Or you can put it up just like that so it's not against the door. And we are going to make pretty tails. Just roll it like that. Just a light roll. Like that. Actually, I might put a little dab of glue in the habit so it just, the tail just sits right there. And then put another dab of glue and have the tail, you know, sit on this one. And then we'll fluff off these loops again. So we added some pretty ribbon to our laurel wreath. Look how pretty that is. Oh, let's just curl it out like that. Yes, like that. There we go. Isn't that pretty? So one roll of mesh. And if you want to do a hang bow, just a pretty bow. It's very simple making, uh, very simple because the wreath is simplistic. And then a ring board and some zip ties. Okay, I know it's really pretty, isn't it? Very simple. And then if you, like I said, if you did a, like a hunter green one, did it all hunter green, and then just put a, a red bow, like literally right on it, just like that, you'll have a beautiful laurel Christmas wreath. Thanks everybody. Thank you so much. So I will definitely post a picture because you will be able to see it way better on my, my uh, door and you'll be able to see the colors. But again, this is a foil mesh, sage champagne, 10 and a half inch. Again, don't pay attention to that. It's a manu manufacturing mistake, but it does say 10 and a half over here. Cut it 10 and a half and 10 and a half. 
and use your Bubba pedal. You need 32 pedals and you just need to preload row one or hole one to the outside and then hole one to one and a half. Yes, you can put berry picks, you can do all kinds of stuff. I like when I'm gonna do a laurel wreath, I want it to be simple. So, but you, you most definitely you can add whatever you want to it. Alrighty. Okay, that's it uh, for this live. Um, I will be going, give me 10 minutes to go get another drink. And um, you can catch me, I'm gonna make another design and I'll show you, I'll give you a hint. I'm going to make another design over on Monkey's Creations Facebook page with this vinyl. Look how pretty. This is vinyl 1361. And I'm going to be using this mesh. Okay? So, we'll see you in about 10 minutes. All right, everybody? Thanks for joining me for this slide. Make sure you come over to Monkey's Creations and uh, see what I'm going to make on the character board.